So we lost our hardcore Iron Man status in a really dumb way. So dumb I'm not even going to tell you to check it out. So to make up for it, we have decided we're going to sprint towards Sora. So this is Recipe Man and welcome to my ex hardcore Iron Man series. The objective of this series is to get to Zura, hopefully in the next episode. Last episode we ended with a total level of 631. So dying is a real bummer, but that means we get to do a lot of things we previously can't. So I've decided I'm going to make up for it by hopefully getting to Zura as fast as humanly possible. And that means we need to unlock as much of the skills, levels, and gear that we need. I think the first thing we're going to do is unlock protection prayers before our combat level gets any higher, and we have 133 dragon bones to help us get there. A huge perk of dying so early means we get to use the best training methods even if they're a bit dangerous. And we're going to train prayer by using the wilderness altar, a training method hardcore Iron Man can only dream of. Our route to the altar starts in Hill, and we're walking straight up to the altar in level 40 wilderness. Something tells me if I didn't lose my status last episode, I would not have hung on to it for very long anyway. But that's quite alright, I'm over it. So this is a wilderness altar, and it has two perks. It gives bonus experience for each bone that you use on it, and there's a 50% chance you save the bone that you use. The math is a little complicated, but on average you're getting 700% experience per bone. There's 7th in prayer. We're currently level 38 wilderness, and PKs can definitely attack us, so we need to use our bones as fast as possible and get out of here. Our prayer level is still really low, and levels should come really fast. We're all done with our first trip and we got about 10 prayer levels. Oh, a PK. -er. Our combat level is really low, so we should still be okay, but as we train prayer, we'll be getting combat levels and eventually other players can attack us. You normally can't teleport beyond level 20 wilderness, but we're going to use a very special distinct perk of not being hardcore Iron Man to use this free Lumbridge teleport. Now all we need to do is head back to Edgeville and do the next trip. We're going to pickpocket men for some coins, buy an axe from Bob's Brilliant Axes, and use the canoe system to get back to Edgeville. From there, it's a simple matter of rinsing and repeating till we use up all our dragon bones. Oh, no, no, um, this is not good. We still have our full inventory of dragon bones. 15, that's not good. This guy is probably a strength pure. Our combat level is still pretty low, so it's a bit surprising that he can attack us. Luckily, we do have a plan if something like this were to happen, which it did. We're gonna bury as many bones as we can and head over to the Chaos Fanatic. If his combat level is as low as mine, the Chaos Fanatic could probably get him off my back. But the Chaos Fanatic is just as likely to attack me, so who knows what'll happen. We're just gonna try to bury all our bones. So yeah, that's not bad. We managed to use up all but 6 of our dragon bones. And with the 3 items we get to protect, we're only losing 3 bones, so... I don't think the PK here can get those bones either, it's pretty close to the Chaos Fanatic. All in all, not too bad a play. We missed the level because we needed to hop to get away from a dangerous situation, but there is level 37 prayer in the chat box. We can now use protection from magic. This level we missed by accident on purpose, 40 magic, we can now use protection from range. So I started recording early and we're definitely not missing this milestone. 43 prayer is coming in soon and that's protection from melee. There it is. We're just going to use up all our dragon bones here, we might get one or two more levels, which is totally fine. All in all, we used up most of our 133 dragon bones, we did not need to get more dragon bones. So level 17 to level 43 prayer had the wilderness altar, you need about 133 dragon bones I want to say. Alright, so 43 prayer done and dusted. The plan is to get to Zura next episode and protection prayers would have been absolutely essential for that. But honestly, we are a long way away from anything remotely close to going to Zora, so we need to change that. We previously did have a master plan. plan. This is the game plan and we're headed to the barrows to grab some gear. But now that we're no longer limited by our hardcore Iron Man status, we can do things much faster. And all that starts by moving our house to Hosiders. We're currently a bit short on GP, so we did some winter thought for some supply crates and hopefully can get some coins. 20,000 GP is perfect. The move to Hosidus will cost us 9,000 GP, which is fair. Now, on to step 2 of the master plan. We're spending our GP on some runes for our first trip to Hosidus. Moving our house to Hosidus was a purely tactical move with a strategic teleport to a central location. The main question is, central to what? First up, of course, is the Fortos dungeon. The Fortos dungeon is a very short walk away from the house teleport here in Hosidus and would make for a great training location. There are a whole host of monsters in the Fortos dungeon, but we're only interested in one. I'm not sure if these guys are aggressive, but that's the main reason why we got protection prayers. If we need it, we have it. Yeah, if I still had my status, I would probably have lost it by now. Anyway, the main thing we are after is over there. We're just going to pop up our protection prayers and make our way through. Really useful unlock for the account. And if what we read was correct, the spot over here is a safe spot. Yep, perfect. So while we take on our very first red dragon, let me brief you on why we are here. 
Monsters in the Fortress dungeon drop the Grubby Key. The Grubby Key can be then used to unlock the Grubby Chest, which contains many high level supplies. High healing food, Ceridamin Brews, Restores and Potions. We are mainly after the Brews, Restores and Prayer Potions for what we have in mind next. So I was about to talk about the Grubby Key drop rate, but um, yeah. We got a Grubby Key on the very first Red Dragon we kill. It's normally a 1 in 50, I think. Anyway, we'll be doing this passively in the background to train our magic. It's a really good way to spend our runes, making sure they are put to good use. And you guys don't really have to worry about it, I'll see you guys when we open the chests. So we're done with our first trip here at the Photos Dungeon, and we're gonna open our first key. Right. Small problem, we're gonna have to train our thieving level up. So we're rolling it back, we moved our house to Osidus for the home teleport to be near this training spot as well. Tech efficient thieving of both these stalls is about 40,000 experience per hour, and we need to get level 57. I'm not too sure of my thieving level, so I'll throw it up on the screen, but I'm pretty sure we have some way to go, so let's begin. We're recording a clip because we started collecting strange fruit from the fruit stalls, and they restore run energy which is going to be useful for us later. Contrary to popular belief, you only need 45 thieving to blackjack bandits in the desert, which is a faster training method, but we went a bit further and we are going to get 47 thieving in a minute here. Basically, with a higher thieving level, we should have a higher success rate, and in theory, a higher experience rate. Of course, before you unlock any efficient training method, you need to do a quest, and we're going to start the field quest right now. And the quest completed. As always, I'll see you guys if anything interesting happens, which here can only mean the pet, or we get the level that we want. Also, there's a really nice gentleman that will unload your stuff for you here, so you don't have to use a bank every time you need to top up your food. I know what you're thinking, we did bring logs to cook our fish, so I'll see you guys later. So we'll be getting 57 thieving anytime soon, and if you're still watching, I'll appreciate if you do like the video and subscribe. Thank you, please. Thank you. I really appreciate it, thank you so much. Blackjacking bandits is not too bad once you get the hang of it, and the experience rates are pretty good, but it can be a bit tricky to get started. And there we go, 57 thieving, we can now unlock the chest in the photos dungeon. So we didn't go to open the chest right away, we had some work to do, and we afk it again at the Red Dragons. We ended up getting another key. So right now we have two keys to open, but this is the very first time we are opening the Photos Dungeon chest. They did mention you need at least 11 free slots to open the chest, so we're just going to drop some of the items that we collected. Alright, moment of truth, we did really spend a lot of time opening this chest, and we are hoping for a prayer potion or restore potions. Yeah, alright, um, we didn't get something we want. The Laurens are a great addition, and the Sharks and Potatoes are really good food for us at early game, but we really do need a prayer potion for what we have in mind. It's okay, we still have one more grubby key to use. Yeah, so no prayer potions, the Laurens are nice, the food is welcome. Moving on. So I thought about this and I want to give this a try without prayer potions, because there is no guarantee of when we can actually get prayer potions, unless you train up a herbal, herb lore level which we are not doing right now. We're here at the Crazy Archaeologist for two possible drops. The Amulet of Power, which will be the best in slot amulet for a very long time, and the Rune Crossbow. The Rune Crossbow belongs to a plan we had in Episode 1, and it's a massive chip on my shoulder that we didn't get it before losing our status, so we're gonna go ahead and try for it as well. Of course, it could always come in useful later, and since our combat level is low, it's better to get it now than come back later and be able to be attacked by high level players. It's a whole thing, but don't worry about it, we're sending it. Ah, uh, where is this guy? Right. Let's begin. So we're making this attempt with 45 prayer and 55 magic, and if we need to train up some more to take on this guy, we're gonna have to do that, but I think we can give it a shot right now. We're cutting it pretty close, he's down to 20 hit points and we only have 4 prayer points left, but we still have a lot of food, so I think we should be okay, we should be able to get this first kill done. Yes, okay, that's perfect. Yes, okay. Uh, first kill done, what? Oh, oh my god. Alright, nice, we got the amulet that we're looking for. The amulet of power is going to be the best in slot amulet for a very long time. The next amulet up is the amulet of glory, which we'll need a high level hunter to get that, so not anytime soon. We've made a little change up to our crazy archaeologist setup. We forked out a little GP for death runes to use elf blast, and we're using monk robes instead. The monk robes make our prayer points last a bit longer, and the elf blast makes our DPS a lot better. Overall, this change makes it a lot easier and ensures that we get the kill. This is KC number 5, and overall we're still going for the rune crossbows. And we got a combat task completed. Nice. We're running a little low on GP for runes and magic training, so we did a couple of agility pyramid runs. We're adding another 60k to the cash stack, topped up our runes and food and we are ready to go again. 
This is KC number 6 at the Crazy Archaeologist and we haven't really talked about drop rates, so let's do that. The ML Powers has a drop rate of 1 in 18, which we already got, so that's fine. The Rune Crossbow is a little bit rarer, with a drop rate of 1 in 25, which is... okay, I guess. It's not too bad. And the Prayer Potions, which we're still going for, has a 1 in 16. We originally wanted Prayer Potions to do the Crazy Archaeologist, but we also need them for the next step of our plan. We're headed to Barrows. Now, I know it's, we are way below the 83 magic requirement that I set for myself before going to Barrows, but we have a plan for that. After all, we can get runes from Barrows, which will be very nice for our magic training, so we'll be training our magic and getting the Barrows items that we want at the same time. I think I'm running out of things to say, so... Okay, final hit. Uh, this is KC number 6. What do we get? Wait, is that...? Yes, okay, we didn't go dry for this one. Nice, alright, uh, rune crossbow completed. The rune crossbow was on our wishlist for Zora, so we're gonna hang on to them for now. I'm not exactly sure what we're gonna do for the range phase of Zora just yet, but we'll figure it out. Nice. Grubby key number 3. No prayer potions, no bruise, never mind. And grubby key number 4. No prayer potions yet, alright. Grubby key 5. Nope. Alright, I guess we're calling this part here part 2, and we need to talk a bit for this to make sense. The goal right now is for us to get to Zora next episode and we're gonna need gear. But to get gear, we need to get to the Barrows as part of the master plan. To get to the Barrows, we need prayer potions, but we also need other things. Mainly a way to get there efficiently. We need to be able to teleport as close as possible to the Barrows from a bank. And herein comes the next part of our master plan. We're gonna be unlocking the fairy wings to teleport into the- Hey, uh, it's me. Sorry for interrupting your video. I kinda need a second here. Zora is right here behind me, somewhere. Probably. All that's left for me to do is to do is to do Regicide and we will be able to get to Zora. I know I said we're going to Zora in the next episode, but we have run into a small problem. I'll probably have to split this video into two parts, which means we won't only be getting to Zora in the episode after next. So the problem is that I've never really did a 20 minute video before, and if I keep going at this pace, that's what this video is going to be. My channel is in a place where maybe 1 in 3 people watch my videos to the very end, and having a 20 minute video that no one would watch isn't very nice, especially for the amount of effort going into the video. So I hope you understand that this episode is going to be in two parts, and I'll see you guys in the next part. If you watch this video to the very end, I'm infinitely thankful, so I'll keep making videos for my 7 viewers.